What's the first thing that springs to mind when you think of the prey species for a great white shark? Now, I'm guessing that a fair few of you out there might have said seal or sea lion. And you wouldn't be wrong. Seals, or more scientifically, pinnipeds, do make up a decent portion of the white shark's diet in lots of places around the world. And I'm sure you'll have seen loads of videos on the internet of white sharks exploding out of the water at immense speeds, sending hapless seals flying into the air. Ooh. But what about the white sharks that inhabit the Mediterranean? This rare and unique population of sharks doesn't really feed on seals in this part of the world, mainly because there aren't any, or at least there's not enough of them left. So if they don't really feed on seals here, what do they feed on? Well, today we're gonna go in depth into the diet of Mediterranean white sharks, looking at individual case studies and some wider literature. And together we'll find out exactly what it is that is helping to sustain one of the most endangered populations of white sharks in the world. Trust me guys, towards the end of the video, there are some very strange prey items that you definitely going to want to know about, so stick around. Anyway, welcome back to another Shark Bites episode, everyone. Now, just as we start, I think it's important that I point out here that while seals and sea lions do feature in the white shark's diet around the world, they're not a major component for every population. This species is what we call an opportunistic species that eats what it can to survive, and it can adapt its diet to its environment or fluctuations in prey availability. Their diet even changes depending on how old they are, with younger individuals primarily feeding on smaller bony fish, and the adults preferring more substantial prey like marine mammals. That right there is called an ontogenetic diet shift, if you wanted to know what it was called. Sometimes it can pay off to be a bit more of a generalist feeder than a specialist feeder though, so switching up your diet depending on what's in front of you is quite a good strategy. I think traditionally, because we've seen white sharks in documentaries primarily feeding on seals, it's led to the idea that that's all they feed on, which definitely isn't true. Overall, I'd say of all the white shark populations around the world though, the Mediterranean white sharks probably have the most unique diet of them all, purely based on how broad it is. Unlike lots of other white shark hotspots, the Mediterranean likely doesn't really have a seal population big enough to sustain them anymore. There's just one species that calls the med home these days, and that's the Mediterranean monk seal. This once critically endangered seal is, to be fair, starting to show some signs of recovery around the waters of Greece, although with a population of somewhere between four and 600 individuals, it's not enough to draw in the sharks. And I think it's also reflected in where we're tending to see the adult white sharks cropping up in the Mediterranean these days, and it just isn't really where the seals are. Sure, you do get the odd white shark sighting around Greece, but they're more often seen around two Tunisia and the Sicilian Channel, and there ain't no monk seals there, that's for sure. Of course, that could change in the future if the seal population starts to recover quite significantly, but I don't think we'll see that for a pretty long time. So then, if they're not really feeding on the monk seals, their attention is clearly turned elsewhere. If we have a look back in time, we start to get our first ideas of what these sharks are eating. The white shark population that lives in the Mediterranean has likely been there for a very long time. We're probably talking millions of years. And looking at fossil evidence from all those millions of years ago, we can see there was a definite connection between white sharks and one type of marine animal. Fossils collected from the Italian peninsula during the Pliocene, the end of which was about two million years ago, shows a direct link between white sharks at that time and Pliocene whales and dolphins. These ancient cetacean species, when they fossilized, were fossilizing alongside the teeth of Carcharid and Carcarius. In one example, two white shark teeth were found next to the skeleton of a fossilized toothed whale, specifically this guy here. How am I gonna say that? Hemisyntrachalus cortesi. <laughs> I can't even read that. This Pliocene dolphin species was found with almost all of its caudal vertebrae missing, and the lower half of its spine was dislocated, along with its ribs being cracked. And right next to those ribs, two fossilized white shark teeth, suggesting this poor dolphin had a pretty torrid end to its life, likely at least being partially consumed by a hungry Mediterranean white shark. You might say that's a bit of a tenuous link there, because the two animals could have simply just died next to each other by chance. Which I'd say is a fair point, although alongside fossils like that one, paleontologists have also found the same Pliocene dolphin species with surrounding rated bite marks on their bones, which you'd probably say indicates predation or perhaps scavenging from a Pliocene white shark. So back in the day, we know these white sharks had some predator-prey relationships with whales and dolphins in the med, and if we fast forward to today, based on different case studies and anecdotes, that relationship remains. Earlier this year, we had the Tunisian white shark sighting, I think back at the end of March, where the shark is clearly feeding on a dolphin carcass. Of course, we can't tell whether that was an active predation from that individual shark and it had caught the dolphin, or whether the dolphin had just died and it was scavenging off it, but either or, I'd say there's clear evidence there that these sharks are feeding on dolphins. As well as this though, if we go back a few decades, there's the infamous case of the whacking great female white shark that ended up trapped in a net off the coast of Italy in 1987. The shark who came in at 5.4 meters, just shy of 18 feet after being cut open, was shown to have an entire 200 kilogram bottlenose dolphin in its stomach, which was said at the time to be whole. A whole bottlenose dolphin. I'm sure I don't need to tell you, but that dolphin species is big. 
big, easily comparable to the size of a large adult human, and that thing was in there whole. But that wasn't the only thing that was in this white shark stomach, and that kind of nicely brings us on to our Mediterranean white shark's next favoured meal. As well as that 200 kilogram bottlenose dolphin, this female white shark had not one, not two, not three, but 20 Atlantic bluefin tuna in its stomach. <laughs> 20. That is just obscene. These were, of course, in varying states of digestion, but again, that is not a small fish species. We're probably talking at least three or four feet long. Tuna species are absolutely one of the Mediterranean white shark's favorite meals, and they're thought to be a major component of their diet here. So much so, their movements around the basin are almost entirely dictated by the movements of tuna. Atlantic bluefin tuna, as well as other species of tuna, migrate into and out of the Mediterranean during different times of the year to spawn. They'll tend to move into the med through the Strait of Gibraltar in spring slash early summer and will head to the spawning grounds where they themselves were born in a process called natal homing. These main spawning areas include the western Mediterranean around the Balearic Islands, the central Mediterranean by Malta, the Sicilian Channel and Tunisia, and then the Levantine Sea over towards Cyprus. It's no wonder then that these locations crop up time and time again for Mediterranean white shark sightings. Both very large adults and juveniles are seen in these areas year after year. Especially that Sicilian Channel and Tunisia area, you'll get videos from these places every single year showing white sharks feeding on tuna. On top of this, there's a hat full of historical accounts, 27 to be precise, of white sharks getting caught in tuna traps in the Balearic Islands, France, and Italy. So if that doesn't tell you that they're pretty obsessed with chowing down on tuna, I don't know what will. Now, we're heading into slightly stranger diet territory from here on out, and the next prey species on the menu for these white sharks is definitely a little bit unusual. In the Mediterranean, sea turtles have actually been found in the stomachs of several white sharks before, which is a pretty rare thing in other parts of the world. Turtles don't really make up a big percentage of a white shark's diet elsewhere, around the world, probably for a few different reasons. But namely, I'd say it was likely because they're not the easiest or most nutritious thing to feed on compared to other prey items. That hard turtle shell is a tough nut to crack. And then on top of that, the white shark teeth aren't really evolved to deal with that turtle carapace, like say a tiger shark's teeth are, which makes them even less appealing. But in the med, in some diet analysis studies, sea turtles were found in nearly a fifth of all stomachs analyzed, which is significantly higher than other populations of white sharks around the world. Loggerhead and green sea turtles are the two most common turtle species cropping up inside the stomachs of white sharks, but the question here is, why are they seemingly feeding on turtles way more here than in other parts of the world? And ultimately, I'd say it likely comes down to prey availability. Like we said earlier, white sharks are opportunistic predators, switching and changing their diet, eating what they can to survive. As well as this, the Mediterranean Sea is one of the most overexploited seas when it comes to fisheries and fish stocks, and a case could be made here that these sharks are feeding on the turtles because there isn't really much else around. If their preferred prey species is declining in its abundance around the basin, then a case they might just have to switch it up and eat the odd turtle to help them get by. Now it does seem that sometimes here in the Mediterranean that that opportunistic feeding behaviour and a possible decline in preferred prey species has resulted in humans ending up on the wrong side of these white sharks. Active predation of humans from sharks is rare, but it has and does happen around the world, especially with white sharks. The species is heavily implicated in attacks on humans and does remain top of the list for total attacks since records began. To date in the Mediterranean Sea, there's been at least 42 confirmed bites from white sharks on humans and at least 23 fatalities. That high fatality rate there of over 50% is actually one of the highest fatality rates in the world, and it likely comes down to the pure size of some of these sharks that are biting. The white sharks here have often been seen reaching well over 5 meters in length, and some have even pushed closer to 6 meters, just shy of 20 feet. So if you're one of the incredibly unfortunate ones to cop a bite in the med from a shark this size, the damage that can do to your body means that even if the shark only bit once, you might not survive that bite. A study from 2017 highlighted 11 white sharks who'd had their stomach contents analyzed contained evidence of human remains in those stomachs, showing that on those rare occasions where a white shark does decide to bite a human, there is a chance that that shark may go on to consume at least some of the victim. This all plays into that opportunistic predatory feeding behavior that we've been talking about throughout this video. This shark species will eat what it can to survive, and on very rare occasions, that might be a human. Now, we can't know in those 11 cases where human remains have been found in the stomachs of the sharks whether they were active predation attempts, as in the shark had decided to bite and consumer swimmer, or whether they'd come across someone who had drowned and opportunistically scavenged on the body. It's just impossible to tell, kind of like the dolphin situation we spoke about earlier. But to show you just how opportunistic these Mediterranean white sharks can be, here's a list of some of the other really rare items that have been pulled out of their stomachs. We've got pets like cats and dogs, farm animals like goats, cows, sheep, pigs and horses. Then we've got bird species like gulls, other sharks, mollusks, and even inanimate objects like bottles, car license plates, and 
broomsticks. I mean, there's opportunistic and then there's opportunistic. Broomsticks is a bit extra. If we check out this handy pie chart here, you can see the overall breakdown of the Mediterranean white shark diet from that 2017 study I mentioned with 161 total prey items recorded. 32% of them were marine mammals, 31% fish, 14% terrestrial mammals, 13% inedible objects, 7% reptiles, that's the turtles, 2% birds, and 1% mollusks. Is there anything on that pie chart that surprises you guys? For me, it's definitely got to be those terrestrial mammals. I just didn't think it was going to be that high. But for you guys, let me know in the comments. I think globally, this population of white sharks that lives in the Mediterranean has to have one of the broadest and most unique diets of all the populations around the world, which is simply a testament to their adaptability and resilience to environmental conditions that are probably really challenging. These white sharks here, they were sadly probably the most endangered white shark population on Earth. So despite them being so flexible with their food, at some point there isn't going to be enough to feed them, which is all the more reason we need to make sure they've got the protections and conservation measures in place to help them out. Now, we've spoken a lot today about what these sharks are eating in the Mediterranean, but where is it exactly that you'll find them? Well, I tell you precisely where those locations are in this video here. Hint, hint, it's got a lot to do with that food, so make sure you give it a watch to find out more.